Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Narrative. I'm Malfunction, your host, and uh, with me tonight, I have got Konstantinos Petrosalis from Estonia by way of Spain. Oh, is it? No, it's Greek. Oh, Greece. I always think it's uh, Spain. I don't know why. I think it's probably got to do with all the Latinas in uh, Spain. Uh, and um, that sort of always remains in my head because... Uh, like uh, from South America, Latinos look uh, quite a lot like Indians, much lighter skin, but they do look a lot like Indians. And um, even Christopher Columbus, the great, uh, well, mapper of the world, whatever, traveler, um, even he got confused. So I can get confused. Mm. I'm a nobody. So if, if he could get confused, it doesn't matter if I get confused. All right. So the drink of tonight is Hata. Mm. This little uh, one I picked up uh, yesterday. This is from Japan, if I remember right. Or it might even be Korea. I might be wrong. But these have little ball bearings in them that you have to knock down really hard. And I actually hurt my thumb just trying to do it because I used the back of a, um, a butcher knife. Mm. Uh, and so you have to. it's got a glass ball bearing that has to get pushed down. And then it pops in and then lets all the uh, carbonated water come up. Or mm. the carbonated soda come up. And then boom. All right, so that's the drink, and it's blue, and I think it's blueberry, I guess. But uh, all in all, it's a good taste. So uh, introduce yourself, Constantine, as well. Have a sip. Well, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Konstantinos Petrokilos. I'm from Greece, living in Estonia for a few years now. I am uh, the creator of uh, my comic book series, Still Get Metal Team, as well as, as of some other projects that hopefully will follow in the future. And they all form together a universe, but its title will stand for its own. Uh, but there will be key characters appearing in all these series. So, so far, I have Arc 1, Issues 1 to 4 from Steel Can Metal Team that have been published from Rising Sun Comics, which is an indie publisher based in Los Angeles. And I'm also, uh, I've also partnered up with Malfunction here, who has his New Zealand company, uh, you know, uh, Rising Sun, uh, Oceania, Plants Entertainment. Um, and so we, me and him, uh, have partnered up at least in, I think, in two projects so far. The one is uh, CD at DJ, you know, a, a satirical comical comic strip. You can see the first strips for free in the New Zealand website, um, plantscomics.com. And uh, we also do together uh, the Templeton Torn book. I'm the illustrator, Malfunction is the creator and writer. And uh, it's been a very fun experience. I'm also growing on the craft because of all these opportunities. So I have learned a lot and I have quite you know, much fun. So awesome. that is so fun. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, we put it out there that we wanted someone to work on this title and we um, got set up to do this. Um, so the story of Templeton goes back at least about a decade or so. Um, Inspired by Constantine, uh, one of my favorite top three characters from mm. DC Comics, actually not DC Comics, he was Vertigo Comics, yeah. uh, created by the, gr the great Alan Moore, uh, John Constantine, for this, his uh, series that he was writing on at that time called uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing. Well-known, very, very amazing uh, series of uh, comic books that's been it's been printed over and over and over again the last 40 odd years almost. And uh, it's, it's just one of my, you know, I just like his writing style, the characters he's created is just such, such a good um, story. So number 27, I should have pulled it out. It's there somewhere um, on the shelf. Number 27, Saga of the Swamp Thing, or Swamp Thing as they like to be called, as they call it sometimes, uh, is where um, John Constantine appears. He's a Brit. And um, I was a, I guess it's a Londoner or Cockney or something like. I can't remember which one it, it, it is. Um, but anyway, of course, you guys have seen the movie uh, Constantine uh, with Keanu Reeves. He should have went blonde, but that's okay. I'll excuse him. And not only that, but they took it to America. But it was what it was. It was a charming little movie with a lot of really cool um, special effects. I have to say, it was yeah. on the on the supernatural side. It was really really well done. And so, um, you know, the CGI was good. The story was good. It, um, it brought in 
the characters, um, you know, that really delved into that supernatural world. And, you know, sitting sitting on the waiting for a plane back from Fiji in 2010, um, I was like, I could do a story about Fiji. You know, I should do a, Fiji, a story about Fiji and about the different gods and demigods of the Hindu religion and maybe try to work it into the Fijian religion and stuff like that and their culture. Uh, and, I, and I could just put the story out there as your own Constantine book, right? Mm -hmm. But then I was like, yeah, I think I could do something with this on my own. And this is like about, I don't know, about 11 years ago. And so we just, I decided, well, you know what? I'll just finish it and we'll, I'll see what happens. And I stayed with John Constantine for at least about seven months, I think. I actually designed a cover for it with John in it, um, you know, Constantine as a cover. Uh, did some sort of like a hammerhead shark tribal design for the cover and everything. Had the smokes, had the, had the whole brown coat uh or beige coat and everything uh with the tie and all that but after that it was like you know what i'll just start working on my own and try to get it done and over the last on and off on and off over the last i guess 10 and a half years uh i built more of the character built more of what was going to go on with it and um and did a whole did a whole like a 90 page script film script, kind of comic book script, and then another one uh, which had to deal with more of a mysticism of the Hindu religion and stuff, and then went for a third, third one and then sort of stopped and just sort of let it go. And then, and then um, I think it was like mid last year or late last year, we decided to work on, start working on Torn or, you know, work uh, together. It was around September. Of mm. 2020. Yeah. 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 So it's almost about a year ago that we've been working on this back and forth. And, um, you know, and I'm very finical with um, how I want my characters look. And and it's kind of, I guess, in a way, I they have to look a specific way. And until I'm happy, then I'll, you know, I'll go, go yeah, now, now this is ready to go. And that sort of, I mean, when you're working with the artist, that sort of can be real tough on the artist and um but then again i want to be satisfied as someone who's creating it to say hey okay this is this character has to look a certain way even when we you know when i i remember paying somebody to do about 15 to 10 pages way back in 2011 i mean 20 i think it might have been 2011 by that time and um you know he came out it was very clear clean cut very uh you know kind of not as rough as I wanted the character to look. Uh, you guys can find that um, eight, um, I think it's eight pages that's available right now called um, Behemoth on free download from, I think free download from Rises and Comics um, on their website under, uh, yeah, on digital comics. It's um, black and white, but it's a complete eight page story. It's kind of like a lead into who this character is. And you can just read that for free. And it's, you know, to get an idea of who this character is without and so not only that, but it's, it is an R, R, M15 uh, mature readers book. So, you know, it is, uh, you know, it's not for kids and I won't, you know, I'm, not, I'm putting it out there right away. It's not for kids. So there's a lot of elements of horror, uh, magic, uh, demons, angels, gore, you know, depending where, which way it goes in the future, because there is some gory stuff that happens. There's elements. I mean, it's hell. Right, it's all you know. The whole idea of Templeton, it's tap, and it's based around part and how part and on Earth and stuff. So, you know, you've got this sort of switcheroo that goes on. And if you look at how um, the movie Constantine worked, it was like you had this beautiful, you know, normal-looking everyday life and on Earth, and then you switch it around, and then you see this flames and all this gory stuff that's going on in hell. Um, but because of my love for um, for um, horrors, I mean, like I've got Clive Barker here, so you've got stuff like Cabal and um, you know uh, Peter, uh, you know, you know, Madness of Cabal. If you if you guys have seen, uh, read the book Cabal, or if you've read um, if you watched the movie Nightbreed, you know, it's that sort of element to it. 
And so being raised on horror, uh, I mean, not raised, but like having watched horror movies since I was a very young kid, on and off, to my adult life. And, um, you know, you kind of, you want to bring that sort of uh, feel to a horror book, even though there's supernatural elements to it. And there is very, very heavy supernatural elements to it. Um, so that's that's the lead into that. Um, and, um, you know, creating character was interesting. Like I said, it was based around Constantine. But I, I totally redid everything about the character so that it would it'll be different to what anything, you know, you couldn't even recognize it Constantine now if you read Templeton. Um, because, it, you know, after deciding that, yeah, this couldn't work for, you know, I couldn't do this with DC, you know, and um, I'll, I'll just do it for myself. Or well, at that time it was Vertigo. And so, you know, um, and he wasn't as famous now. It didn't have a cartoon series at all, you know, involved in um, cartoon movie, um, animated movies. Didn't have a TV sh series. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess Constantine had come out, and I really loved that movie at that time, which was about 2004, I think, might have come out, 2005. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's that's the lead into who this character uh, kind of was created um, uh, and background. So, you, you know, you've been, I mean, I you know, we've been working together on, um, basically, I mean, I come up with the idea of how it looks, and then I toss it to you, and you come up, come back. And so, how have you been going with like, um, I mean, you know, be honest. I don't mind, you know, people knowing how because like the whole idea of this one is to let people know when you're dealing with a, when a, between a writer and artist how the form works. Because I think because I deal with so many different writers and uh, you know with artists, I should say that I each one works differently on how we go back and forth um, and you know what they what they think and how much I can expect from them and how could, how much they can expect me to change to mm -hmm. allow for things. So how did you find the process of having already seen the, um, the artwork of somebody else's work? Because I mean, we were looking going, hey, we could just make it like that. And then I decided, well, yeah, I think we could recreate everything apart from one or two characters. Yeah, well, uh, I have to be honest here, as you said, uh, I like um, I like uh, the protagonist's uh, look, uh, Templeton uh, Smith, right? He, I like as he was before and as he is now, but for different reasons. His look has changed now. I like his clean cut. I, I, I'm just, I guess I'm a sucker for, for big, strong, uh, like male protagonists who have their hair back and they have these white shoulders and this clean face but then again the way you change him makes him also a badass but you know with more extras that he hasn't uh, he doesn't appear to have before also the artist of the old pages that you showed me uh has done an incredible job i mean i think it would be a great book even with this style you know and um to have uh, reference page, uh, you know, pages as reference, not only from other titles, but from a former artist working on your project. It's very helpful for your new illustrator, in this case, me, because um, it, it looks like, you know, you have been, uh, uh, you have uh, had your, um, you have agreed on these uh, elements that were presented in the pages. That means I can be already into your mind and see what you like and what you don't. And then with our further conversations, you know, there is more understanding of your vision. But of course, it's lots of work because we have to rework sometimes on the art, on the pre sketches that we do. We have to make a conversation and sessions, uh, you know, between us for some time. I mean, it took us around uh, how much? Did it? it was at least a month that we were trying to, uh, you know, finalize some designs of places, of characters, appearances. But in the end, I follow your instructions. I take little initiative because this is your vision. So you do sketches and then you set them and then I reproduce them in my own style. And then when we agree, we can move on. So it takes some time in between, but it is worth it, you know, in, in the end, I think. Yeah, it's worth it. Mm. I mean, like that, that whole thing, like, I mean, you know, like uh, I, I work with another, um, with another, uh, um, sorry, I work, I write for somebody else. And, and um, in the sense that, I edit somebody else's work on another project, an actual gaming project, you know, visual novel. And so mm -hmm. I can't, I can't twist their vision to what I want, what I think is going to work. I just let them do their story. And I, t I become the, um, the artist on that part where I just do my job, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like a flip for me to like go, okay, 
I, I see how it feels to be someone who just has to, you know, here's a job. This is what you what you can do, what you can't do, and you must stick to this thing. And and it's and in a way, it's kind of like really cool because I just follow what he says in his dialogue, and I just try to make it better. And then if he says, okay, I, that's not where I want to go, I go, cool. You just tell me where you want me to go, and I'll go with that, and I'll fill in what needs to be done. And then if you decide to chuck that out, that's okay. And I think that's that's basically, I, I guess it's kind of how it works in the sense when you you know when you're working with an artist as a writer, and you kind of like you, it's kind of a team, and you're sort of like back and forth um, trying to figure out what's going to work and what isn't. And it, because at the end of the day, you you know you, you want to put out something that's because people are going to be paying for this, right? We're expecting people to pay for this. And I mean, even recently, I had to, I pulled my book off um, off uh, Kickstarter because I was like, yeah, I I uh, I'm okay with paying for it, but would people pay for this book and be happy with it if if the if if you know if places of artwork is kind of like different to another you know art piece and stuff like that? If it's not fluid, and I'm and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I don't think I could. I, I could 100% agree with them being okay with it. And then I was like, had to make the big decision of saying, no, you know what, I'm going to pull this off. And then I'm going to, you know, restart it with another artist who's actually going to do the entire thing. And the same thing here, right? Restarting with another artist doing the whole thing from scratch and saying, okay, you get to do it in the way you think it's going to work. And, you know, I get to d design the characters are new, fresh. I think the only character we stuck with was Pacinta. Because Pacinta looked really cool, and there wasn't many changes we needed to make to him. Uh, because that, that character was really, you know, uh, straightforward. I think I put him here somewhere. There's a little lamp. I've been sitting around. Hopefully I can find it. Um, yeah, for those that's... for those who don't know, Pacinta is the demon partner of the protagonist, Templeton. So, yeah, that's the other character of the story. Cynic evil and uh, you will see when you read the story when it comes out so yeah yeah so so this is the original um actual original um uh, two characters the um and the blue there is the original design for um templeton and percentage mm -hmm. is the uh, demon there let me see if you can get that right and so he's you know it's the He's got, he was really well designed, I must say, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and he graces the cover of the Sun, uh, Sunspot magazine, which you can download for two ninety nine on <laughs> Presents and Comics Digital, sixty four mm -hmm. pages, full color. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think I just like his design. I think it's a really cool design that he came up with. Uh, I think uh, I can't remember his name, uh, the original. Uh, uh, artist on that it was a paid for it was uh it was uh what's it called uh freelance work paid uh i had to pay or something like that um yeah and um and this was like you know years ago and so almost a decade ago and and now we've got this really cool looking uh hold up um you know hold up uh, uh you've got your um templeton the new design of templeton there yeah um i can uh, screen share it i can uh, wait um i have to uh, all right uh, yeah so yeah. I, I based the new design on um uh, like this one's got a more um <clears throat> excuse me so the character that you know the look of um this older looking um template design is more um let me see Filipino, I think it's Filipino because the the actual artist was from Philippines who did it, who, um, who did, designed the character. So it's more, you know, kind of has a more European um, look to him. Whereas the new design that um, I came up with for, um, you know, that's posted on Facebook. Um, Can you see it? That I designed I there. It is it, yeah, it's actually based off uh, a Maori uh, gentleman here in New Zealand. Act, you know that I looked at this photo and I thought, yeah, he would look cool with that. Gave him a bit more long hair, uh, got rid of the short hair, 
got uh, you know and just sort of made a bit more curly a bit more rougher looking um bit of a um, you know bit of a beard goatee and and also gave him a coat a longer coat than it's on this one where it only goes up to like half halfway down the knee or mm. just above the knee whatever thigh uh, gave him some guns you know if you saw in the image there on facebook um and yeah, yeah try to give him a more western sort of spiel to the character um can you see my screen i have shared it already oh, you mean on here yeah yeah i have done uh, you know screen share screen sharing and i saw your design is it visible no, it's not. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, Constantine is just fixing that up. Um, so, uh, I think one of the one of the other characters that actually shows up in ish, I think it's in ish, in the <coughs> second series, which is like six, you know, like which is like about epi um, issue seven or eight. Is uh, is a character that we brought into this one. I okay. I decided to bring in early. Can we see this? Yeah. Uh, can you bring it up closer? Yeah. Like uh, how do I? Ah. Hmm. Yeah. So it's got a bit more rough looking and a um, bit more um, bit more um, you know, the changes to him is quite different. Um. I added skulls um, and and sort of try to give it a bit more, um, you know, a bit more demonic elements to it um, because to kind of uh, balance out that um, the percenters, um, percenter being a, a demon and Templeton being a human in hell, I try to add a bit more um, supernatural elements to the character of Templeton as well so that it could balance out between, you know, the beast the human, and of course the beauty, which is uh, Sangam, which we, you know, who will be, um, will be the later, um, later half of the actual, um, of the book. And so it's kind of, you know, having decided to bring in a character that was going to be introduced, introduced about eight issues in, into the first 40, 40 page ish, a one shot, it's been, a, you know, it was a bit of an interesting task itself. So I'm gonna let you talk about the artwork. I'm, I'm, otherwise, I'm gonna keep talking. Uh, well, for example, when it comes to the protagonist Templeton, uh, basically, uh, Malcolm Jones added, added him long hair, uh, a goatee, beard, some be very cool coat, uh, and, and two great, great-looking weapons with skulls and numbers, sometimes Latin numbers, other times, you know, the Arabic numbers on them and on their forehead, uh, very cool boots, uh, basically a very cool design that I think uh, it's maybe to a degree inspired from anime because they have very dynamic designs, usually, especially when it comes to supernatural genre stories. So that's, that's a good uh, source of inspiration there for this type of thing. And then we have other characters, the readers will come to see uh, Sangum, like the the Sukubus uh, partner of Templeton, a very charming, like demonic, of course, but uh, very beautiful uh, fe feminine figure. And then uh, Pete Centaur, a very strong bodybuilding type of a demon. Um, you know, this story, the way I have read the script for this book is, uh, you know, it has it twi it's twists, it's scenes of action. Uh, it is, um, it's like watching a movie, you know, the way I was reading it and I was imagining it, 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 is, it's, it flows very well. And so I believe, uh, you know, along with a good story, uh, since we have some very cool designs and very well-written characters, I, I believe the, the readers will want even more and they will enjoy the first book, which is Thorn, you know? And we can say a synopsis about what Thorn is about, you know, in case someone hasn't because I heard of it before in our posts, you know, what Thorn is about. Well, it is, uh, you know, this uh, book is basically the first, uh, let's say the first uh, story after years, after the Behemoth book, okay? 
uh, of, of the Templeton series. And in this case, we have this musician protagonist, the New Zealand New Zealand musician, uh, who is a celebrity. And then, you know, we see that um, he leaves our plan, he dies, and he tries to find his murderer. And in the meantime, we see how Templeton and his partner, Chris Centaur, are involved. And we will, and you know. We will see how it goes when you know the reader will see for himself and it has very good other elements you know the hellscape is a big ambitious uh, thing that we work with malfunction for many days to finalize its you know its design and final conception i have had to go through tons of images for references imagine uh, images about hell demons hindu temples like they have a very intriguing look um and, and i have also you know, get other image references. I have the former artists' pages as references. It has been a very interesting journey so far, and I, I, I you know, I feel very, very honored to have this opportunity to contribute in such an ambitious project. Because Malfunction has written other scripts for the next books. It's not a small story; it's a big vision of a story. So, I believe it's totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a, a um a complete forty-page story. Uh, yeah. You know, which is almost like a, a um, it's not a first act. It's like the, I mean, if you're watching a movie, it's like the half an hour of a movie. So it's um, you know, half an hour of a show. But it's it's kind of um, you know, I wanted to do it this way so we could do a complete show. But the thing about this is like it's based like the the story um, of the character, uh, like the character. Um, gosh, I always forget his. Um, the super superstar rock star writer Armstrong. filmmaker you know sorry Armstrong the yeah Brooklyn. Armstrong so yeah. Armstrong uh Tahi I think it is yeah one hmm. Armstrong one uh Tahi is uh, one in Murray and so hmm. um Armstrong one you know is is this the best you know the cream of the crop you know he's He's Jimi Hendrix. He's freaking, uh, you know. Um, I guess he's. Uh, let me see. Tom's uh, Tony, not Tony Stark. Uh, you know. Uh, gosh, Chris Pratt. You know, Chris Pine. Um, you know, he's. Uh, I guess he's Stephen King. If you, you know, or, or John Grisham. He's everything, and you know, and he's basically what happens when you got everything and you you know you're living the high life and that's the basically the story of this um of torn is like this rock star kiwi new zealander uh you know superhero guy um you know super, not superhero but i mean this uh larger than life character who's very yeah. creative artistic everything going for him and then we you know think realize there's things that's happened to him and and it's the story falls into you know goes forward from there and then we have our characters Pacinto and um Templeton show up on the case and you go who are these weirdos out of the blue you know you just go who are mm -hmm. these weirdos and you know because there's some really vicious things that are happening before they show up and you kind of think well where is this all leading to and I'm hoping that the surprise and how it's all done and um you know the way we you know as we slowly you know over the once we start getting these pages finalized and stuff you know we'll start popping them up on our website and on um, you know plungecomics.com and you'll be able to see um, the work we put into it or the work that um you know Constantinos has put into it and the um the character development of the design work and stuff um i might pop some up and uh, once we put this out on youtube um and so on you know um get some couple of um, things up there to show what the designs look like. Um, the other thing is that, when, you know, it's been a year long, almost a year long process from deciding to do the script, um, you know, do this as a 40, 40 page script and to actually get it to where we're like, okay, now we can talk about it. You know, where I feel comfortable saying, hey, now let's talk about it. And I only decided yesterday to talk about this because at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, you, you can keep working on it and just, you know, back and forth. I mean, like I finished writing, I, I, I can't remember when I sent you the last 40, you know, last pages. Was it 
you know march or something yeah and i was like okay that's it i don't have to do anything else with this i'm, I'm gonna let go you know and um let um let constantinos do the artwork <laughs> yeah i love that yeah. It's, uh... yeah, so i mean how do you feel about like um you know, working on somebody else's uh, characters. I mean, I, I know we've worked on the cartoon characters of the uh, Peter and Shibi, but this mm. is a totally different element, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like uh, because uh, you know, it's also this thing that you just said, the genre. It's different type of story. Thus, it requires also a different type of art. So it's like you are a radio, and he kept you tuning in a different station. Uh, you know, and <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing because uh, the cartoon, uh, the comic strip that we are doing, it's a, it's like a break for me. Uh, Templeton is like um, it's like you know, do I want to hear some rock music for a while? Okay, that's it. That's the, my station there. You know, I want I want to feel in a certain way. Uh, at Templeton is my uh, my chance here, uh, and so. Um, as I as I mentioned earlier, it's a, also an opportunity to grow as a creator, as an artist, because it pushes me harder, my limits, my creativity, and um, it's, it also teaches you how to team up with someone. I mean, okay, in my book, I do pretty much everything on my own, but to also team up with someone uh, gives you, you know some other set of skills and uh, it helps you grow as a creator as a person so i think it's good for me it's been very good very beneficial yeah it's i mean i can describe it as trying to like you know listening to uh you know watching uh, uh like a slice of life anime you know high school anime or something like that mm. and some suddenly you're watching detroit um the detroit city um metal detroit metal city which is like a you know hardcore death metal uh, anime, which is like just you know pulls your you know pulls you up by the hair and goes you know and that's what I kind of like feel like this book's like. It's Temple is basically like going right away, going yeah, start slamming your head now, you know <laughs> the old um, you know the old Metallica or Megadeth or probably Sl Slayer. It's like basically turning up Slayer to ten and going. This is what this book is about and hopefully that energy uh and the feel of the story will come through in the work you know in the comic book as you read it uh because it, you know yeah it's, you're right it's like turning off you know changing the channel on the radio going from hip-hop or pop or um you know what's whatever's you know popular or whatever's nice and happy whatever or, uh, danceable to whatever's like banging your head you know and this is for me, this is what I think it is. It's kind of like being a metalhead as well. It's basically Slayer, you know. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Angel of Death, basically. Mm. And um, you know, hopefully, and you're and you're talking about like creating the hellscape. I mean, that was a hard one because I had an mm. idea in my head of what hell should look like because I've been brought up religious, and so you know, for several years, and so mm. uh, no longer religious, but I mean. I've read the Bible. I've read descriptions of what goes on. I've had, you know, I've had preachers talk about it. I've watched movies on it, and of course, we've got all these horror movies like Hellraiser and, and stuff. You know, Clive Barker, yeah. of course. You know, oh. grandmaster of what hell is going to look like. You know, and um, and so you know, you've got all these images that you can work from. So I, I try to get delve into it as hard as I could. Well, what do you, you know, how do you feel about like trying to create that? What was it hard or, I mean, like, I know I had my ideas, but, you know. Listen, I mean, you, you just mentioned some uh, examples of, uh, you know, sources of inspiration. Uh, and certainly uh, the Bible does refer to it, but not like in such a great or, or grotesque detail. It's just some very mm. basics. Now, it's the creativity mm. of directors, the comic book creators, illustrators that have given us more details at the set of different versions, but they all mm. have as a common horror, you know, agony, yeah. no hope, yeah. no what, not any chance out mm. from it, you know. As long as you depict, uh, as you transmit as a message, uh, these elements, these feelings, I think you're pretty much good, you know. And in our case, the hell we depict is full, is overcrowded. You know, there are lots of, Buildings, a lot so that are, you know are very grotesque and horror-looking. There are huge 
uh, statues of demonic forms. Through them, there are bridges and pathways. There is a set of different demonic creatures. There are souls that go through all kinds of torments. There are hell carriages, you know, that they they carry the new uh, souls that have arrived uh, in hell. And um, because of this environment, you know, and of course, there are many other things, hierarchy of demons, a living demonic figure. Readers will see for themselves in the story. But because of this very uh, environment, we see what the protagonist, Templeton, goes through. Because, you know, he's the protagonist. And in this case, he's also the hero. How can a hero who mm. works for hell tolerate something like this and not suffer at the same time? This is something the reader will yeah. have to see for himself. You know, it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, I was just looking for like um, Geiger's work. So I mean, like I'm very, like very at a very young age. I was, you know, because of watching um, Hellraiser and Aliens and stuff. I was like a follower of Geiger's artwork, and I used to like really just, um, you know, and so sort of I wanted that sort of kind of like real, like you said, you know, hopeless, dark uh, imagery, full of uh, skeletons, full of skulls, full of. Um, grotesque looking um, demons and stuff. And, you know, and especially, I mean, Geiger's, a, um, you know, Geiger and actual, because, I mean, Clive Barker himself is an artist, right? And he's, uh, um, I guess, in all, you know, as much as he's a writer, but I mean, when he's, when he was working on how, um, you know, um, on the Hellraiser uh, original movie, you know, you could, I mean that's an epic in its own right, as you know, standalone on its own right is what like we could imagine hell to be like. And you know, because if it was like that, you know, that's enough to scare anyone. And of course, it should because it's a hor horrible looking thing that his depiction of it. Yeah, but so I, I think. Um, I just want to add that Clive Barker's hell is a little more sterilized, not so chaotic. He has a very totalitarian sense of order, a labyrinth, uh, you know, strict architecture. It's not like, yeah. uh, you know, fire at rocks. And yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of order to everything that it's in there with, uh, um, gosh, I can't remember the name of the actual cubes that get you there or the puzzles. Uh, but yeah, I think, but I think, as much like I think there's there is order to to hell in the sense of that way apart you know in that way as well as well as you know there is always structures no matter what I mean if you look at it for me I think hell is a dictatorship mm. right and that's you know if that's what hell is it's a dictatorship where someone's telling you 24/7 when to eat when to you know when to sleep when to go out when to come go um, you know Stay, you know, stay home, when to, um, you know, w what to do, when to breathe, when to live, you know, whatever, when you can't live, because I think that's where hell is, where it goes, it stops you from, uh, you know, it confines, it takes away all your rights. And I think, uh, I, I think that is the, that's what dictatorships are about, is like where you basically have no rights at all. And I think this is where I kind of like wanted to go with the whole idea of this book was in the sense that, um, my perception of how it would be that so it's like okay if if we kind of like you know this is a overarching story we're looking at about almost uh 10 comics here that has you know issues that are set up for this and um on the long run uh, and you know and also what we're going to do with um uh, ones that we don't actually mention in this series i think early on or I can't remember if we do in this uh, episode where we actually, um, because it's a mature book, we're not gonna, uh, you know, there is another, uh, there's a couple of characters that have the Templeton name that aren't in this story. Uh, and they will be in the later stories, but they'll be depicted early on in their life, then in the life that we're gonna bring in into Incredigal. Mm -hmm. And I've just written, the, um, you know, brought them into Incredigal in issue two, which we're just redoing uh, for um, for the new artists that we've got working on that. Um, but I mean, you know, that's the Templeton twins. And so I think the, the fun part about having a mature book is that you can 
do a lot of more adventurous stuff uh, and artistically as well as, you know, mature uh, elements of what you can bring into that you can't do in a, you know, in a PG book, like say uh, PG and Shibi or uh, PJ and Shibi or Incredible Girl or, you know, some other um, books that I'm working on that aren't, you know, mature. Um, mm-hmm. So, so what was like, you know, like you said, you know, changing from uh, a very down, you know, very PG series like PJ and Shibi to actually working on, changing up to a mature um, reader story like um, Templeton? For me, it's like when I read different types of comic books, I don't go only for one genre. You know, I like to go to mm-hmm. different types of stories. So this is also when I work on different projects. It's good to work for the one type of thing. Okay, now let's switch to the other. It's uh, diverse. It makes me feel fulfilling. And it gives me a fulfilling experience as an artist. So I don't mind at all. It's, it's easy to switch. You know, it's like when you have different types of thoughts in your head. You go from the one to the other. So it's like this for me when it comes to the projects. Also, <laughs> for a moment, uh, uh, I had this vision of how it would be if PJ and CB were in hell. Hmm? That would be mm-hmm. kind of very, <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine, <laughs> uh, you know, have this company's character running to save themselves from the monsters there, for example. That would be kind of <laughs> funny. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, all in all, it's not difficult for me. I like uh, the different genres I'm involved with. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's it is pretty cool to like uh, you know change from thing. Uh, you know, it's like me sitting uh, you know uh, working and then watching having one sort of anime on, and then one day while I'm doing some uh, you know writing, and then having another anime on another type. Like I, I do enjoy the Isekai uh, you know um, animes where you basically die and you got, come up into this fantastical world, or you get transplanted hmm. to this fantastical world with with uh, elves and demons and uh, and fairies and magic. And the next thing you're just watching a, you know, normal sci-fi spaceships fighting and stuff. And it's, and that's variety is a slice of life. I mean, you know, and I think it's, um, it makes life much, so much more fun when you've got different stuff to work on as well as to read or write or watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it shouldn't be uh, a challenge for the reader either, because as it happens with us, or when someone gets into a comic book store, they have a number of choices. I'm certain they're not going to go, most of them at least, for one type of story, but different Mm. genres. So, yeah. Um, And I think uh, Templeton is basically, it has elements of different uh, titles that uh, people have come to to love and support, like uh, Constantine. I think uh, a little of... um, of Spawn, a little of Crow, a little of um, Elf Anime, as I said, like, Alu- uh, how, what was it? The Alucard character. Uh, Helsing? Yeah. The Helsing anime? Yeah. Manga? Yeah. 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 Helsing. Yeah. Yeah, I love Helsing. I think um, the whole, um, the vampire killer Helsing in that series is just really cool anime. And I think that's why it's much love. I think the, um, the manga is much love because it's such a well-rounded character. And I think that's what I, you know, I'm trying to go with this one was like, try to get a really well-rounded character happening. Uh, and that's why I think, um, I'm, I think that's, that's what made me bring Sangam, Sangam way from, way back from issue eight into issue one, um, into this um, one shot, because I thought like, what do I need to balance him out? Because he's not rounded. There is no sort of like, you know, I need something to balance this character out. I've got my demon, you know, I've got my monster, I've got my human. What am I missing? I am I'm missing my beauty. Mm. And I need my beauty in this to make it make it a balance, you know, the the trio, the triune, um, you know, it has to be fin- um the trinity has to be of these three characters. And because if we're gonna have like, you know, if we're gonna have show the humanity of um uh of templeton then we have to show the balance that what brings that balance to him because he is in hell and then you've got percenter who basically you know wheeze on people and he doesn't you know that's the kind of horrible person he is and he's a demon so why why would you expect anything else from him anything lesser than demon Mm -hmm. um you know you know being a total evil person and um but then of course then the idea is well what does templeton bring to percenter and what does percenter bring to templeton 
but then it's like, well, couldn't Pacenta turn him, you know, turn him more evil, you know, make him a more horrible person as a human, you know, because he's living in hell. So if he's living in hell, Pacenta is his boss. So Pacenta could have a more, you know, uh, more power, um, power over him and more influence over him than anything else. So he could turn evil himself. So what could work is if we brought someone I had in issue eight, I planned for issue eight to come back and to issue, you know, this um, one shot um, and try to bring balance to him right away or maybe whatever part of this life is because in hell, as far as we know, there is no time, right? Yeah. So I could, you know, this story could be set like in the future or in the past, but in our world, but there it's like, it's just, everything's moving constantly and fluidly and there's no time structure to hell. So, you know, you could be looking out the window of whatever hell is and you could see yesterday and the next moment you'd be looking at 20 years, 20,000 years in the future. Wouldn't mm -hmm. really, you know, and that's the kind of like, I was, that's the idea I was thinking like, how do I play around with these characters? Because, you know, I mean, I'm bringing the religious teachings up, hey, and stuff, but I'm really bringing the hardcore uh, other elements of my life that I have, which is like a love for horror, growing up in horror movies, reading horror books, reading Clive Barker, reading, you know, Stephen King, watching all these movies, and then just saying, how would, how do I balance out a good supernatural uh, story that actually has enough emotion in it to people to connect with? Because at the, at at the end of it, it was like it's just kind of like a monster movie no connection and then it's like you know and then when i wrote the first series i straight away brought in his kids uh you know and i said that's the what's going to balance them out but i couldn't do it in this one because then i needed to say well what if if i can't bring it in the kids in this one i need to bring the other element which is to bring in a love interest or maybe not even a love interest actually how do we know he's she is a love interest until we find out, or if we don't find it, what if she's like another evil person who's just using it for her own thing? Because yeah, she's a probably. succubus, right? Uh -huh. So succubuses, uh -huh. they could basically turn around and just say, well, see you later, as we say in New Zealand, kakite, you know, uh -huh. and, um, you know, and um, I got what I wanted out of you, so bye. And next thing you know, this could, something like that could send Templeton way back into the evil side again but i think this is the brilliance of um actually starting with the characters first and having a story actually story first or a character first and then working building up on the ground up and uh and the cool thing is that it's like you know it's what we're creating you know and um what we're building up and we have the freedom to do that without saying looking over to our shoulder saying is this the right way to go or you know is this how you wanted it sir you know apart from us going yet yeah, and then we're bouncing it back and forth and saying, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. rather than a committee saying, you yeah, know, this is not how it should be or whatever. And I think hopefully, I mean, you know, you, you had a good time, uh, you know, you, you're having a good time working on it and um, mm -hmm. you know, what, is there anything else you want to add? And then we'll, we'll kind of, cl we'll close up in a couple of minutes after, you know. Um, I mean, um, let's see. Uh, maybe before the release of the book, we can start showing some of our art, meaning of the three sketches we have worked on the concept, design concept, and all that, so that people can start having an idea, get interested, and see how much work we have put into this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, if you like adventure, horror, uh, depth into the character stories uh, and their uh, dilemmas and uh, the challenges they, they will face, if you like supernatural and horror, if you like Hellboy, Crow, Constantine, uh, and that, you know, or Helsing, the manga, if you like all of these type of things, this and more you will find in Templeton. And so I hope you will join us in this journey. I certainly have had lots of fun so far. And I hope you will have too when it comes out. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's, it's still, we're still, you know, getting it sorted. Uh, and um, once, you know, we'll put up, like Constantino said, we'll put up some um, sample pages and stuff and try to, uh, you know, uh, show you what we work, you know, what the work's like. We just, we thought, I mean, I just thought like it would be cool to um, talk about it now because as we mm -hmm. build into it, we're actually, 
you know, we actually laid the groundwork. We're building, you know, getting the foundation, you know, the walls are up, the walls are up. All we got to do is start working on the roof as such, as they say, in the builders, uh, building uh, a construction industry, right? And so yeah. this is, you know, this is hopefully you like, you know, um, you'll join us in trying to, you know, having a look at what we're doing and support us when we get it out there. And, um, and yeah, we tr we're going to try to work really hard to get a, get a good product out and um, try to make sure that, uh, you know, it's a book that we, I'm, I'm proud of the story for it and I'm mm -hmm. proud of the, um, the character designs and stuff. And I'm really excited about what we, you know, what Constantinos is doing. And uh, I can't wait to see, um, you know, the finished work. And then we can just carry on and start lettering it because mm -hmm. that's where my job comes in, lettering it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's still a few months down the road as far as I can uh, I understand because it's going to take me at least a month just to letter it. Um, because 40 pages is a lot of lettering to do, designing the book and stuff. But And, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I didn't talk too much. I just want, uh, you know, we, sorry we didn't have lots of things to show you because it couldn't be shared on this thing. Uh, but um, you will see it on comic, um, planchcomics.com. Uh, we will share some on Facebook here. But, also, but yeah, if you haven't already sussed out, uh, you know, visited um, Plunge Comics, account, check it out. We Both of our works are on there. Uh, wow. LPG and Shibi uh, cartoon strips are for free. You can read those for free. And, uh, um, you know, well, we've got some more stuff that we got and coming out we, and there's yeah, other stuff and, there that you can read. And they can follow and, uh, us on yeah. our social media to see artwork and learn more about the projects, you know? Yeah, so. you yeah, you've got all the other things that we do as well. But also there's blogs as well. And um, there's, you know, stuff we talk about the industry and stuff. And, uh, you know, even though, you know, we create comic books, we still also, you know, talk about comic books and comment on comic books as a whole and the industry as a whole. And, uh, you know, the fun thing is that we actually create what, you know, what we love. And we, you know, we work on these projects because they're, we're excited about them. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be trying to put them into actual physical form or spend all the time that we do on creating those things uh at the end of the day it's uh we love what we do and i know i do um writing's all i do <laughs> most of the time mm -hmm. uh and design and um so i think um when you have a, someone who's willing to work with you as an artist to put those words into actual images and in, in a comic form it's really cool and really exciting and very you know it's 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 very rewarding to see the end product and to see the work as you go along and, you know, every step of the way, uh, mm -hmm. seeing, you know, seeing the images and seeing the design work. And it's, it's, a, it's a real fun process. It's also a hard process because it hours and hours and hours and hours of work goes into it. Mm -hmm. Even after, you know, I've sent the images over, I mean, sorry, my, the words are um, script over, there's still tons of work that's done outside of that that you know the artist has to deal with but then it comes back to me and or the letterer and we design the book and letter it and so there's a big huge process i mean like it's been almost a year that we since we started the project and uh you know and yeah i'm hope hopefully you guys will support us in, in our endeavor for this and um any last words um constinos and then i'll close up just uh, you know, stay tuned, and uh, there is more coming in in the way. You know, very amazing. Awesome, excellent. Yeah, yeah. There's. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, just want to keep this one short, and um, because of course the work isn't done yet, so we just wanted to say it's not completed yet. So wanted to keep it short and sweet, like kind of like a teaser, and um, just talk about it. And thank you for joining us. Kakiteano, wherever you are, thank you, Constantinos, for taking your time out. It's 11 o'clock there in the morning. Uh, yeah. Is it? In my, yeah. in my part of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 8 o'clock evening here, and it's, uh, it's 11 o'clock over there mm. uh, in um, Estonia. So thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Kakiteano, be wherever you are, be safe and be well. Okay. Hey guys, Malfunction here from The Narrative. Thank you for checking out my channel. Um, like, subscribe, do all the good things, share, and um, join us here every 
well for future videos and commentaries rants or rants discussions interviews with creatives in pop culture uh, pe fans of pop culture fans of comics manga anime creators artists writers from all over the world as well as here in new zealand uh, we hold a um, a yearly um, convention here in Whangarei, in new zealand all around pop culture anime and manga and comic books of course um, thank you for checking us out and thank you for checking out um, the videos we have and please support the creatives that we have that i interview and check out their work and thank you for joining me and like i said like subscribe and um, see you on the next broadcast.